title, Are We Born With Narcissism? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing an interesting psychological question, are human beings born with narcissistic tendencies? Narcissism is a trait of having an excessive interest in or admiration of oneself. While we often think of extreme narcissism as a disorder, almost all humans exhibit at least some mild narcissistic tendencies from birth. Let's take a deeper look at why this might be the case. To start, let's make sure we understand what narcissism really means. Narcissism exists on a spectrum from mild to extreme. At the extreme end is Narcissistic Personality Disorder or NPD, which is a clinical diagnosis involving a persistent pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy. But narcissism exists in much milder forms as well. We all exhibit some natural tendencies towards self-interest, self-preservation, and wanting attention and validation from others. While extreme narcissism can be damaging, Milder forms are simply part of normal human nature. So are we actually born with these narcissistic tendencies? There are several different factors that suggest the answer is yes. First, it's important to understand that as infants, we are completely helpless and 100% dependent on others for our survival. But at the same time, we have very real needs and desires like food, comfort, and stimulation. The only way babies can get their needs met is by crying, cooing, smiling, and doing whatever they can to get their caregiver's attention and affection. This means that from day one, humans learn that certain behaviors can cause people to dote on you and meet your needs. We are conditioned from infancy to seek attention and validation. While not yet conscious narcissism, these early survival skills form the foundation. Additionally, some narcissistic traits may be linked to physiological brain wiring. Neuroimaging studies show that areas of the brain related to self-referential thinking and reward are highly active in individuals with NPD. The dominance of these regions could suggest a biological basis for self-centered thinking that is present from birth. Personality research provides further evidence that narcissism has an innate component. Twin studies comparing identical and fraternal twins have found that narcissism is 62% heritable, meaning a significant portion of it can be attributed to our genetic makeup. With such a strong biological influence, it suggests we may be born with narcissistic tendencies. However, while we may be born with the capacity for narcissism, psychologists argue our environment plays a critical role in whether those tendencies become overblown. Parental overvaluation and excessive praise of a child's qualities have been linked to later narcissism. Competitive and individualistic cultures may also cultivate narcissistic traits. So in summary, are we born with narcissism? The evidence would suggest yes, at least in seed form. All infants exhibit behaviors aimed at self-preservation and garnering attention. And we may be wired from birth to derive pleasure from receiving validation. However, it takes certain environments and developmental experiences for those seeds of narcissism to grow. Mild narcissism simply allows us to feel good about ourselves and believe our needs matter. It only becomes problematic at the extreme end of the spectrum when taken to an unhealthy level. Transition. Those are some of the key points to understand about the potential biological and developmental roots of narcissism. Next, let's go over some of the ways healthy and unhealthy narcissism can manifest. While we all have some narcissistic traits, there are healthy and unhealthy ways these characteristics might show themselves. What are some examples of healthy vs. Unhealthy narcissism? Healthy narcissism generally leads to higher self-esteem, an ability to take reasonable pride in accomplishments, and a knowledge that your needs matter. Signs might include having positive self-regard and confidence in your abilities, being able to accept and learn from criticism without major damage to self-image, 
taking leadership roles and enjoying recognition for talents and achievements, pursuing self-improvement and ability to delay gratification to work toward goals, having interests and passions that provide meaning and purpose. Alternatively, unhealthy narcissism manifests in ways that impair relationships, cross boundaries, and damage one's ability to function. This can include an extreme need for constant praise, attention, and admiration from others, overinflating one's own talents or accomplishments, taking advantage of others for personal gain, difficulty feeling empathy for others, reacting intensely to criticism with anger, shame, or humiliation, having an attitude of entitlement and lack of willingness to work collaboratively, exploiting relationships without investment or commitment. The key difference between healthy and unhealthy narcissism comes down to balance the ability to care for one's own needs while also considering the needs of others. Extreme narcissism undermines that balance and can be driven by underlying insecurity. However, milder narcissism is not only normal but often advantageous. Confidence, ambition, pride, and purpose help us achieve personal fulfillment. We just have to be sure our self-interested tendencies don't tip over into selfishness or a sense of grandiosity. The healthiest mindset might be think well of yourself, but not better than others. Transition. Now that we understand the range of healthy to unhealthy narcissism, what are some tips for keeping our natural narcissistic tendencies in balance? If narcissism exists on a spectrum, how can we be sure to stay or the healthy end? Here are some suggestions. Practice gratitude. Make a habit of appreciating what you have rather than focusing on wants and perceived slights. Count your blessings, journal style, or share gratitude with others. Cultivate curiosity about others. Ask people about their interests, stories, and perspectives. Listen intently. Perfect the art of sincere compliments. Offer authentic praise to others when warranted. Make volunteering a priority. Contribute to causes more important than your own interests. Develop self-awareness. Notice when you are being self-focused versus self-absorbed. Reflect on your own faults and mistakes. Strive to learn rather than simply critique others. Deal well with criticism. Humbly apologize for missteps and seek constructive feedback as an opportunity for improvement. Remain humble about talents. Have self-belief without inflating your capabilities compared to others. Avoid frequently talking just to hear your own voice. Ask if you are interrupting or dominating conversations. Balance self-care with consideration of others' needs and time. Prioritize relationships over always trying to impress. The goal is not to squash healthy narcissism, which provides confidence and ambition, but keep it in check by listening more, complimenting others, and putting community over personal gain. Developing this mindset takes self-awareness, but results in balanced self-love. Conclusion. To wrap up, current research suggests that all human beings are likely born with some innate narcissistic tendencies rooted in our early survival needs and neurobiology. These traits sit on a spectrum from healthy to unhealthy, with the potential to tip into extreme narcissism under certain environmental conditions. While we can't erase our natural narcissistic wiring, self-awareness and intentional behaviors can help keep it in balance. Seeking attention and validation from others is normal, but should not outweigh our ability to show genuine care. Our highest potential lies in embracing leadership and confidence while also practicing humility, gratitude, and cooperation. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I'd love to hear your take on this topic in the comments below. Let me know if you have any video ideas you'd like to see covered in the future. If you found this video interesting, hit that like button and subscribe for more weekly psychology and self-improvement content. See you next time.